Welcome or welcome back to In the Element, the figure skating show where we break down and recap competitions in the figure skating world. Hi, I'm Kathy, and I'm here today with my co-hosts Sammy and Emma. As a reminder, please follow us on Instagram and Twitter at In the Element FS to stay up to date with figure skating news and send us questions that you want us to talk about on our show. Feel free to also check out our previous episodes covering figure skating at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. In this episode, we'll be recapping the 2022 World Championships. Be sure to let us know what you all think in the comments below. Awesome. Great. So jumping straight in into the conversation about Worlds and this Worlds right after the Olympics, as we said before in our predictions video, the Worlds after the Olympics is always a little bit strange and especially so this year around with a lot of injuries, with the situation with Russia and Ukraine, and China also not sending people, so the field was very interesting this time around. So what are your thoughts, Emma and Sammy? I had my hopes up high for a lot of people who normally maybe wouldn't get as much attention with Russia normally present, particularly in the ladies and also in the pairs. And I think that people definitely for the most part delivered especially in the ladies getting to see people have some clean performances and be on the podium so I enjoy getting to pay more attention to people that normally I may not have gotten to see in the final group and things like that yeah no I agree I think this year's world honestly felt more like to me like a lot of more olympic moments happened at least for me because it felt like this year's olympics was just so depressing in some areas in some fields uh and being overshadowed by a lot of scandals and dramas where i feel like this time around it was i feel like a lot of people had like their moments and especially the ladies podium was just all good vibes to me and i really loved it it felt like the old skating that I knew was like back again and it was the first time in a long time that we saw the podium especially for the ladies be so diversified and having all three different countries flags raised at the medal ceremony was something that I have not seen in so long and it was honestly such like a touching and beautiful moment for me to see and also this year's Worlds in France was the first competition in a long, long time since the pandemic that there was actually a really sizable crowd. And of course, we haven't been really talking about how the crowds affect the skaters until really this competition because we just haven't had a crowd because of the pandemic. So that's also interesting things to keep in mind going into the conversation. Just adding to that, I wanted to note about quickly about the kind of culture around skating in France and how happy and excited people are to support skating. I think uh, Jackie tweeted about how there was a sculpture in the actual rink of tracing like the steps through Surya Bonnelli's uh, (laughs) one-footed backflip in the Olympics so many years ago and I thought that was really special like tribute to the history of French figure skating and also just the country's love for the sport and I had no idea that that existed so I thought it was really cool and also just adding in um obviously in France Papadakis and Cizeron are their French skating stars and um have seen from skating Twitter that there are a bunch of water bottles that had pictures of the ice dance duo on them because they're such big stars in France. I love it. But yes, with that said, let's jump into today's conversation. So why don't we start out with men's? So men's this year, we saw our top three, Shoma, Yuma, and Vincent. So who got the podium most right for this one? Was it, who was it? Uh, You had Vincent third, right? Oh, I had Vincent third. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Oh, I had Vincent second. I had, um, mine was uh, Yuma, Shoma, Vincent. So. Oh, I think okay. Emma or, got it. Yeah, yeah, you're the closest. I think mine was Yuma, Vincent, Shoma. Same. Damn, damn. Emma, Very Emma close, can... very close. Yeah, Emma killed it in this one. And I think just talking about, like, the short program results, honestly, was, like, I did not expect Kazuki Tomono to come in third and it was really because I think in worlds they have like the mini medal ceremonies after like the short and the long and it was so great to see them all get a medal and it was like 
a really long time since yes. we saw like, the, like all from the same country yes, and, and they, they just were... look so freaking adorable and they're all like the same height and just... I was like they're just too adorable yep I think something notable to mention was Ivan Shumarado I believe that's how you say his last name he skated his short program um in a team Ukraine shirt oh. and then mentioning the pairs and dance team from Ukraine they also debuted brand new short programs by Ukrainian artists for this world's so that was a very touching moment, and um, I can't imagine the difficulties that they must have gone through to actually even get to world championships. Yeah, the fact that they even, you know, competed under these circumstances just, you know, attested to their strength as athletes and the statement that they're trying to make. Yeah, definitely. And especially just seeing the solidarity and the crowd support uh, that they received was very impressive that you know, with that overwhelming emotion inside themselves that they could, you know, hold it together through a whole program okay. while hearing all of that uh, applause yeah. and the yeah. support for them that was in the arena. Yeah, it was really great to see all the other skaters like wear like the heart um, symbol on their masks, on their shirts, on their warm up jackets. I think it was just a nice showing of the world coming together to, you know, support peace. So what did you guys think about Shoma's performance, the most notable thing that I saw was that in his performances here, he was much more relaxed than at the Olympics. And also what I really loved about his Bolero free skate was that at least this time he was skating, it seemed like the energy really built in his step sequence. And that might have been a result of his cleaner skate here than at the Olympics. But I just saw that energy in his footwork and in his like PCS and his skating. And also I wanted to mention Stefan, his coach's reactions in the Kids and Cry are literally the best. Stefan seemed more excited than Shoma did when Shoma won. So I thought that was really funny. (laughs) That's so cute. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, like, you guys have already heard on this podcast so many times how much I hate Bolero. But if I were to say one thing, Shoma's Bolero is probably the most palatable one that I heard (laughs) in this entire season and with that said I think you know landing his technical elements definitely you know like improved his confidence for the PCS part and we saw four different quads from him including the quad loop what you said Emma it's the most controlled I've seen him in a long time and the reason why I put him as bronze in my prediction is sometimes his jumps do get a little bit wild a little bit squirrely in the air the rotations not are not as crisp and neat but this time they were really, really neat. And he has some of the best flow going into his quads and going out of his quads. Yeah, um, I think for me, just one thing to point out, it's interesting that his excitement definitely built in the performance. And I think that kind of led to his popped triple flip in the planned like triple axle Euler triple flip sequence. Um, so he did a single flip there. And that was actually, I believe, the same exact mistake as in uh, Nathan's Olympics winning free mm, so right. I just found that kind of um, funny obviously it didn't impact him winning at all uh, either but yeah uh, agreeing I definitely enjoy this version like the music version of Bolero that he used more than other ones that have been used for skating like I enjoy it more than Camilla's uh, Bolero version and then I also do think that he's clearly worked a lot on his jump technique as you guys have mentioned I think that even in this competition, as compared to the Olympics, I felt like he did a more consistent, better job of using his shoulder to like check his rotation when coming out. And then he still kind of did a nice curve out of his jumps with more rotated out shoulders, but it was after he had already checked to land. So yeah. Yeah. And I think that his PCS, um, his PCS sort of being superior to Yuma was more clear here because of Yuma's mistakes. And so that, I felt, elevated his score even more. But speaking of Yuma, what did you guys think? It seems like Yuma's now the new uh, silver collecting machine. He got silver (laughs) at Worlds last year, silver at the Olympics, silver this year. I do think that he was able to actually improve on his jumps at the Olympics. For example, like Kaori, he channels his speed really well into his landings and has a lot of flow coming out of his jumps. I I will also say, though, that his two mistakes in the free likely cost him the lead, which is a a two-footed quad loop and also the singled axle instead of the triple axle which cost him about seven points so maybe a little bit of a disappointment for him because he knew he could do better 
I should have maybe thought more about how he's been yes he's been getting better but he hasn't been perfect all season and so you know there's something to be said for the maturity and experience of Shoma helping out in a situation like this after the Olympics when there's now a world championship on the line but yeah I'm so excited to see him next year when I watched Yumo I was not nervous I felt like even though he did make mistakes I still know that for the big majority of the program he was going to like hold it down and I think that was in contrast to when I was watching another skater, Vincent, who I really wanted to podium, and I put him as my silver for my predictions. But he had the skate that made me the most nervous when I was watching him, partly because I just really want him to have, like, a great redemption experience from his really bad, like, Olympics experience, not being to skate because of COVID. So he honestly looked okay with his bronze, but I almost felt like internally he was always... I felt like you always try to shoot for higher as an athlete. And I felt like he was, I felt like maybe deep down inside, he was hoping for a silver, but he really, really did fight. And I know that you mentioned a lot of the post, uh, the post performance interview, Sammy, I actually went back and watched some of them. And I think in Vincent's interview, he mentioned that, you know, he almost actually withdrew from worlds because he said, coming out of the Olympics and the quarantine, he was so out of shape that it was really hard for him to, you know, get his program run throughs again. So yeah, but, you know, he pulled it together enough to get the bronze and, you know, getting the bronze is not easy at this world, even with Nathan and Yuzu out. And I would say the men's field is honestly one of the ones that probably still stayed the deepest, despite all the withdrawals from Nathan, Yuzu and all the injuries and whatnot. Definitely. I think I also saw the, I'm not sure, it was, I think it was an Instagram reel of him celebrating with Camden the moment that he found out he would get a bronze and they were in that little waiting area. And he just, he was like pumping up his fist up and down and kind of just like kneeling down on the floor so in shock, sort of at the accomplishment, kind of putting it all together. Um, leading after what you said, Kathy, about how he wasn't even sure if he would be here. Um, And so that was just really wonderful to see them get to be together in that moment because they're training mates. I think Vincent is still relatively young, so I'm not sure if he will continue next season and through the Olympic cycle or move on and go to Brown Mm full-time or what we'll see from Vincent in the future. But I personally would love to see him get to skate more and – um, perhaps maybe with some of that Olympic pressure off his shoulders. Yeah, I also saw that video and um, I was so happy for him that he got to win a bronze medal, even though I'm pretty sure he didn't expect it exactly after his skate. So it was awesome to see. Our next skater, Jun Hwan Chop, he actually withdrew from the long due to bo- boot issues or equipment issues. And maybe that could have been why his short was a little bit rough. Yeah, it's it's really unfortunate because I do like both of his programs this season. I like his, his short quite a bit. He had these very intense and sharp movements choreographed. It was really, really a great program, especially his short. Since Jun Won withdrew, um, Korea now only has one spot for next year's Worlds um, because they placed out of the top. 10. We mentioned June having boot issues. I think Donovan Carrillo from Mexico also had issues where he lost his skates in France. I'm not sure if it was due to the flight, but he also was forced to withdraw from the event. That is so unfortunate. I would have loved to see him skate again. Circling back to another skater that I was talking about before, about Kazuki Tomono unexpectedly coming in with the bronze in the short program. I... Also, never understood why everyone said Tomono had jazz hands. And I was like, what do you mean? But I totally understand it. Because, like, I feel like I haven't really watched Tomono very closely, just to be honest. Because I felt like he's always like, oh, like the third Japanese skater, the third or fourth Japanese skater. But I realized that came from the fact that he skates to La La Land in his (laughs) free program. And in the beginning, he does this, like, fake piano playing thing which I think was like really funny and I think he has great potential if he can be just like more consistent I think his PCS needs to be more refined but I would say his like 
natural connection to the music is actually not bad. La La Land step sequence was actually like very energetic. Like it had so much energy. It almost made me forget some of the technical problems earlier in history. So that was that was nice to see. His choreo sequence at the end of La La Land is the best. Love it. <laughs> Love the energy. You mentioned Kathy, a lot of unexpected finishes for t- uh, Tomono at This World. I-, I would say he had a lot of unexpected events in his life recently <laughs> because he actually competed a week earlier and thought that that was going to be the end of his season since he was second alternate for Worlds. But then Yuzu withdrew from Worlds and then the first alternate, Kawamura, also withdrew to the in- due to injury. So Kazuki had to step up as second alternate and he really did seize the opportunity in his short one question i have for you all is what is your opinion on commonly used music so i know we talked about this a lot with bolero but i feel like la la land is also kind of commonly used for example ashley wagner's la la land and also yuma and kaiori both use gladiator music Mm, i actually have a lot of thoughts here i think one point is whether or not there's an audience or not, I think that sometimes affects it because if it's music that's well known to the general public, I think the audience gets more behind it and sometimes that feeds into the skaters' energies and the judges' reactions, especially to the PCS scoring part of things. So that is one component. I think the second thing, I actually talked about this like with my personal choreographer who was like a former... Um, U.S. national champion and we were talking about this I was like oh I don't know what I should pick for my music should I go for something more traditional or something like more like modern or unique that they might not have heard of and basically something that she mentioned that was actually pretty valuable was um, they were like oh like it's easier for the judges to understand what story you're telling on the ice if they already know the story ahead of time so they're more focused about like looking at the skating rather than like trying to figure out what story you're trying to tell like is it a sad one a happy one you know so I think that's like I don't know just my two cents on it yeah I definitely would say that just for La La Land specifically I'm not always the happiest to hear it but in this case I'm always very happy to hear it because I feel like his it fits his style of skating and it capitalizes on uh, his performance quality and I'll absolutely miss this program a lot. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen Carmen in a while. I feel like that's true. Like Carmen, Romeo and Juliet, Moulin Rouge, like freaking just like skating like Bolero. A bolero. Oh God, don't get me again on the Bolero. Like, you know, just classic skating shit. We love Anthem to see the it. opera. That, oh, like, yes. Four people skated to that one season a few years ago. Slim is. Oh, yes, Les yeah. Mis. I don't um, want to hear Les Mis again. Okay, so I guess moving on to another <laughs> unexpected person on the scene. We knew that Ilya was going to be at this World Championships and unfortunately missed out on the Olympics due to the U.S. Uh, Olympic Selection Committee. But I personally really thought that he had a chance to at least skate close to clean here and he definitely knew he did um what did you guys think about his showing here yeah I think he was really disappointed after his free skate and you could tell the moment he finished and got off the ice I think he's the type of guy who is a perfectionist so like any mistake he would just be pretty tough on himself I almost put him on my podium predictions as like maybe a bronze just because his jumps are just, like, he he rotates so freaking fast. I honestly think his skating style reminds me of a Russian ladies, Mm -hmm. just because he's so flexible for a guy. Like, Mm -hmm. some of his spin positions are not, like, typical of, like, the typical men's skating positions, just because of, like, flexibility limitations. And I also think, like, his quads, he probably, you know, has, like, he may not have, like, the flow like Yuma and Shoma but he has like the most I feel like speed and tightness in his rotations so I think that you know he has a lot of potential to improve I would say his PCS definitely needs a lot of refining I feel like if he really nails that on that consistency um it'll be great to see him for many many 
seasons to come. For sure. He's still so young, so he has lots of years and seasons to continue improving. And unlike most of the skaters competing today, or in, in senior worlds at least, Ilya's season continues at junior worlds in two or three weeks. So I think what he can really take from this experience is sometimes competitions don't go as planned, but I'm sure he's going to come back stronger and possibly even win junior worlds. So excited to see him there. I had no idea that you can compete in both senior worlds and junior worlds. Like, is that a thing? Yeah. If you're age eligible, you can compete in both, but I'm sure it's, it's tiring because it makes your season super long. Oh I actually God. think that Junior Worlds was supposed to be before Senior Worlds, but then they had to move it um, due to restrictions right. on location. A few of my thoughts on Ilya. I mean, echoing what you guys said, honestly, the falls were kind of downgraded. Uh, ways that he went out of the jumps were a little bit painful and twisty looking to me to a point where I got a little concerned, but obviously he was fine too continue i noticed in his quad lutz it's so beautiful how, like the trajectory of it how he's so much like rotation that he kind of opens up his free leg a little bit i think early in the air considering it's a quad and maybe he just kind of opened his free leg too, too early, early. Yeah, yeah on some of those jumps in the free mm. just because he normally has so much Rotation. He doesn't yeah. need to. He doesn't need stay to stay tight. Like, yeah, stay tight the whole time. So maybe it's just a timing issue, um, and it looked like it took him by surprise. Yeah. We're excited to see him at Junior Worlds in next season. Yeah, yeah. Speaking upon another U.S. person skater that we haven't actually talked about on this podcast yet is Camden. So I'm actually really, really happy for him. He had a clean free. I think. He has a lot of potential if he chooses to continue. He um, did a great job in the free skate. His birthday, I'm pretty sure, was also the same day as the free skate. So doing so well on your birthday at Worlds when you were, like, second alternate, that's amazing. And I'm so happy for him. Yeah, I yeah. again, um, same with Japan. U.S. had the second alternate situation with Jason Brown not, like, being out of commission and also Nathan being injured. Um, yeah, I also did not know Camden was dating Karen at all. I hope they're still dating, but I knew that Karen was dating someone because she posted on her Instagram. But I thought he was just some random dude, but I had no idea he was also a figure skater, and that figure skater was actually Camden. But, you know, now it all makes sense. I think it's really cool that he got to get his little small medal from the free, um, no one would have probably predicted that he would beat so many of these top men in the free. And then definitely people made a lot of mistakes, but still it speaks to um, his quality that he was able to skate earlier on and score high enough with his name not being as big and whatnot to be able to place third in the free. Yeah, with that being said, maybe we can transition to kind of one of my personal favorite skaters from this whole season which is Adam <laughs> Schauhenfa from France I think he just has something more energetic about his skating and so much speed carry through all of his steps that are so high energy and it's just incredible because I know sometimes he makes mistakes and he's not as technically um sound or as technically has as technically challenging programs as the top top men but I just think he has so much potential even for for world medals maybe in the future because he if he just gets more consistent and adds more quads I think his jump technique could carry him to start to do really really well in the international scene I think I will really miss his innovative programs from this season. Also want to jump in here, Emma's question intermission. Adam's programs are choreographed by Benoit, who also choreographs Daniel Grassel, Kari, um, Ekaterina Kirkova from Poland's programs. When you observe all these like four different skaters and you watch their programs and their skating, you can kind of tell that some elements of the choreography are similar. For example, they all stop in the middle of the ice and kind of like bend down and do this like arm motion to emphasize parts of the music. I think that's something that I've noticed 
especially watching these skaters at Worlds. But it's what's interesting to me is that each skater has their own interpretation. So what do you all think about Benoit choreo? I guess he's been becoming pretty popular, pretty big these days. Yeah, I would say his choreo in general is probably not my absolute favorite style, but I do think he has made some really iconic programs and certainly he has been able to craft programs that meet the strengths of some of the skaters that he works with. For example, Mm -hmm. for Kauri, she's really strong in her skating and has really fluid motions and a lot of speed. And so I think his style of choreography maybe works for someone like her better than it would for, I'm trying to think of someone who's more balletic like uh, Carolina Costner yeah like Carolina Costner something like that yeah so I think it all depends on the person I think Benoit definitely has a busy job I don't know if he ever sleeps but (laughs) I also like his sunglasses that he wears at every competition in the kiss and cry iconic oh my god (laughs) I, I I feel like I just still don't know what he actually looks like behind those sunglasses, but that's fine. So I think that is a wrap for men. So why don't we jump into ladies? Ooh, ladies. So much to talk about. I would say minus Wakaba not being on the podium. I have not been so happy about a full podium in so long. Like like what I said before, I don't remember the last time gold, silver, and bronze are all from different countries. And I was just... I was almost in tears in the medal ceremony when Kauri was also like shedding a tear when they were playing the Japanese national anthem. I know in France this year, they had like flowers in the little boxes with the handle and the reaction to like Kauri and the girls like smelling the flowers when they were on the medal ceremony and the little like COVID elbow bumps they had was um, just absolutely endearing. And I just loved seeing that great sportsmanship. Yeah, I also think Cassie was the closest on this podium prediction, right? Yes, definitely. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I won this category. (laughs) But I guess we can start about Wakaba and how we all failed in that prediction, unfortunately. I was so sad that Wakaba did not medal here. And it was honestly the best chance that she had to be able (laughs) to place high on the podium I felt like she was a bit underscored at the Olympics and I almost wish that she didn't go for her triple axel in the short program here at this world's because I think she would have been in a better position heading into the free skate given that the field is weaker without the Russians so the triple axel mistake in her short cost her a lot and then the free was just so sad to see uh she got a lot of under rotations that I my eyes were a bit blind to but you know that's okay the judges can do what they want um and they probably did happen but anyways I saw somewhere on Twitter that she might have a foot injury that she potentially incurred after the Olympics it's really sad if she does because I really selfishly Mm -hmm. wanted to see a queen another queen lion king and a silver medal for her here yeah, and I was just add on to that, that she looked very, very tired, especially in the free. So I hope that, you know, she's doing okay. And I think we talk about her jumps a lot because there were a lot of technical mistakes there. But she also like got a level three spin in both the short and the free. And when you look at the women's top, like, five, six ladies, like, almost none of those people are getting, like, level three spins. So, like... Just in terms of, like, for example, we discussed this just, like, in our chat when we were chatting, live watching the event. But, like, for example, her layback got downgraded to a level three. And Emma, you mentioned that was because her shoulders weren't parallel to the ice. Was that what it was? Like, I think it would be really interesting to hear from you guys when you guys were competing how you guys dealt with levels and why, like, perhaps spins would get downgraded. Yeah, so everyone usually aims for a level four spin. um, And specifically in laybacks, it means you have to have four different features. Um, I think one of the most commonly lost features that people don't achieve is on the layback, you have to have both shoulders flat. So that means your upper body is parallel to the ice. And a lot of the times if you're slightly tilted, which is 
easy to tilt on your leg either like your standing leg right yeah so what often happens is that your shoulders tilt slightly when you're trying to do the hair cutter uh, and you often can lose a level from that situation that being said i'm not exactly sure specifically why walk about got a level three i i don't think i watched super closely to that spin specifically this time but it's really upsetting to see that sh- this issue came up at the Olympics where she got lost levels on her spins in the short and then it came up again at world so yeah I guess moving on to another Japanese lady but now definitely much more so on a higher note let's talk a little bit about Kaori she is literally my queen my ray of sunshine she is so just adorable and her passion for skating just gets me every time and I think like Honestly, your guys is pinged in the chat and you guys are like, oh yeah, her program was like so poetic. I feel like Benoit was getting to something there when he (laughs) choreographed it for the Olympics with all the other young preteen and teen ladies in the competition. So I think whether or not that was like intentional, I think her program definitely did grow on me a lot throughout the season. It did make such a strong statement just within figure skating in general that Older adult women also belong in figure skating, not just preteens and teens. Her ending pose with the I am the woman sold it to the T. So, yeah. And I love her fierceness right before she steps onto the ice with her coach. They always do like a little like a little ta-ta and she seems so fierce and she just goes out there. Yeah, for sure. I think there is a lot to learn from Kari's coaching team. So she has the same coaching team as Mai Mihara who's another Japanese lady, and they're both known for their consistency. So I don't know. There's something about maybe their coaching team, the way that they're trained in terms of like mental strength. They're just super, super consistent and wondering maybe that's something that's like special to their team. Additionally, what also stood out to me was that specifically at her performances at Worlds, it seemed like her jumps were a part of the choreography. And I don't think that's something I can say about all skaters, but Curry's programs, like her jumps melded so well together with her skating. Yeah, she also, along with Stefan, has the best kiss and cry reactions. Those are top two kiss and cry reactions. Oh yeah, no, it was so funny, especially after a short, she could not believe it. I think she went like to check the score more closer or something. Like she went really close up to camera and she's like, really me what and i was like yes you because you killed it so we can move on to our silver medalist in this competition uh lona i never know if i'm pronouncing her name correctly but hopefully i am she definitely pulled it together here despite the injury and sort of took advantage of the biggest opportunity she's had all season to show up on the world stage um and personally Her programs are both my favorite of this whole lady season, other than Wakaba's Lion King Free. That was my very favorite. But then these two programs from her were my next two favorites. So what did you guys think of her here? Yeah, I would say she's definitely up there as my like top favorite with Kaori. I just can't believe she pulled through so hard with even like a leg injury. Like we saw like her leg was wrapped pretty heavily in both the short and the free and I was really rooting for her but you know we've heard from Jackie who tracks all the practices that she's only been doing doubles in the practice sessions so I was like a little bit worried and I think this is just like a discussion about injuries as a whole and how it affects like it obviously affects your performance but in a way It's also like partially mental as well because injuries can create like mental tentativeness when you're approaching an element because your body naturally tries to protect yourself and to not do the thing that could potentially hurt yourself again while trying to perform a high pressure situation program at the world stage. So that is very, very difficult to do. But honestly, that also just attests to incredible muscle memory of the human body because I'm sure... Luna has, like, trained triples so, 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 so much that that definitely just, like, stuck with her. So this is really funny. It's, like, similar to my experience at Eastern Sectionals because I felt like... So basically, I injured myself doing my layback, but then I didn't want to do it again until 
the competition. My coach was like, just do it once in like the five minute warm up. So I didn't even do it in the five minute warm up before because I was worried and my layback was the last thing in my program. So I ended up just winging it and doing the layback at the very end just once in my program. And I haven't trained it in like a month, but it ended up being one of my better laybacks. So you know, it all worked out. But anyways, I was just saying that Luna is just such a fierce competitor. I honestly love her. Agree with you, Sammy. Her short especially is one of my like favorite shorts for the season. I'm honestly super old school and I love Laura Fabian. (laughs) And Caruso is just so legendary, so dramatic, so emotional. And it's honestly just like a big win for Belgium, which is definitely a smaller country when it comes to presence and like figure skating. For sure. Belgium now has three spots for Worlds next year. So really excited to see future Belgian skaters. I think another skater I was really happy for, a little bit like expected, but also unexpected, was Alyssa Liu from the US. And I think we've seen her kind of have a tough season, especially before leading up to the Olympics. But I think honestly, she had a really good mindset, or at least it seemed like she had a good mindset going to the Olympics. And it seemed like the Olympics was quite like a positive experience for her. And it I I felt like it personally helped her reunite her skating careers and help her kind of reset her trajectory to be hopefully upwards and upwards from here on now. And I think that she did the triple axel and then she did actually land it. It got called under, but she still landed it. Her triple lutz, triple toe combo also got called under. But other than that, she skated like a clean free and short. So that's definitely like a big win for her. And I think like her PCS, she has improved so much from when she first like kind of arrived onto the skating scene as a senior. So I think like her PCS play is honestly quite smart. And it's almost similar to like Yuma's play where her coaching team chooses for her more upbeat, joy- like joyous, playful, youthful music. Um, I would love to see her grow into like a more mature point where she can perform and interpret perhaps something that is more mature, similar to, you know, what Luna is able to kind of perform with that level of maturity with that Laura Fabian, like more dramatic storytelling music. Definitely. Also quickly jumping back to her jumps. There's something about her jumps. I've mentioned this before, but they just look so secure, especially her triples and her triple triples. I think she gets enough height, but she also gets into the rotation pretty quickly. So usually they're not like under rotated or cue at all, which is really good because I think that's an issue that American women have struggled a little bit with in past years. Yeah, I think just one other point about Alyssa and the fact that she was able to surpass both the other American ladies here was that when I think back to the very, very beginning of this Olympic season back in, I think, July slash August during the Senior Bs, some of the summer events, I remember Alyssa really showing out at that competition in Boston. I forget what it was called. Oh, Cranberry Cup? Yes, yeah, Cranberry Cup and doing like two clean, strong skates, and I believe attempting the triple axel there. And I remember being impressed by her PCS improvement, like you guys are saying, even at that point, when she was still, I believe, with Jeremy. And so I think that this result is honestly a testament to the fact that she was working so hard coming off of her disappointing year in early 2021, where I believe she was fifth at Nationals. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but she just put in so much work um, on the front end And I think that carried her through to where she is. I think pivoting from that, in terms of talking about ladies from Korea, I want to just talk a little bit about Young Yoo and Hyun Lee. Let's start with Young Yoo first. I really honestly thought she had maybe the silver or bronze in a bag after the short. That's what I thought too. (laughs) Me too. Her short was so I was happy about that prediction for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I was so happy about that prediction until her free came and I was like, ah, fuck. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she skates with so much flow and speed. I honestly think the triple lutz, triple toe combo she did in the short was probably one of the best, like, triple, triple combinations that I've seen in the entire, like, program. Um, I feel like maybe other than like calories, but it was just so crazy fast. She went into it with so much speed and it was so controlled and the landing was beautiful. It was held. I just think that, you know, unfortunately she did not have the best free. I think she might also be a little bit tired because 
Korea just keeps sending these skaters to so many freaking competitions. Yeah, I remember being so positively surprised by her short program. She looked so nimble and she's so detailed in her skating and following the choreography and the music. I thought that that was really great. Um, I also wanted to specifically point out her landings on her jumps. There's something a little bit special about her jump landings where she adds a little bit of, I don't know, is it like flair where she like either lifts her leg or does something with her arm that Mm. just makes it look a little bit better than the typical landing. So I think that she has many, many bright years to come. Yeah, I think one other comment on both of these ladies and just in general, honestly, Korean ladies skating Certainly in the post Yuna Kim age with these women, they're also talented. But I do think that as we were speaking about earlier, some of the war horses type music that is used again and again, like Les Mis and Phantom or other things, Korean ladies in recent history tend to use a lot of those types of war horse pieces. And I think that maybe in the future, in order to create more of a known presence and like personality individualized personality with the judges I hope to see maybe more innovative or customized like material to each of them next year because they're all so talented in such unique ways that it would be nice to like see them each develop their own style next year with different pieces yeah and speaking to like skaters with traditional music I think someone who also had a very traditional short and free was like Mariah Bell from the United States I think, like, the change was obviously good because it suits her better, but both her programs are very much, like, similar in terms of vibes. I honestly loved her Hallelujah program. I just think, like, the new red dress does not fit the vibe as much as her old one did when she really had that moment at Nationals, like, the year before. And I would say, like, her short, like, even though she did do the triple, triple, which I thought was actually, like, pretty fast, um... So that was, like, impressive. But just in terms of, like, skating to, like, River Flows and You, which being Asian American, that piece of music is, like, very meme just because it's, like, so overplayed. And so, like, I played that on the piano, like, to God knows when, when I was, like, a kid. So that was, it was fun to see that come back around. But she did get a cue on the triple triple, but she did do one, which is tends to be a struggle point for a lot of American ladies to add into their programs. But I was really surprised that she was third after the short and fourth overall, which I was like, damn, like did not expect that. Yes, I would say I was definitely super happy for her. So uh, for her to have such a strong showing after the short program and quite honestly, a pretty good long program for the most part as well. And I yeah, definitely agree with you, Kathy. I think her triple triple looked better here at Worlds than it did before. So yeah. Also quickly jumping back to Hayen. I loved her long program so much. She was so cute. During her program, she was like letting out these little screams or these little yells after certain jumps. And initially I thought that that was like her coach or a fan. But oh, then really? on Twitter, someone was saying, Oh no, that's her screaming. And that was so cute because she's just, like, so happy that she's landing these jumps, doing her program. And that's what we want to see. We want to see that self-confidence right there. So Damn. I guess, yeah, for me, it was just a little bit disappointing to see the quarter calls on the jumps, especially since it wasn't super noticeable during her skate. But overall, beautiful skating, beautiful program. I guess yeah. with under rotations, that leads into another U.S. lady Karen it was I felt pretty sad to see her not skate as well as she wanted to hear I think perhaps she's considering you know transitioning on to focusing more on school and going back to Cornell I'm not sure if any I don't think anything has been released so that's all conjecture but she's had a huge skating career both these Olympic cycles and so I think you know, regardless of what her future plans in skating are, she wanted to end strong here at the Worlds and get a redemption from the Olympics. And that just didn't seem to happen. I personally did want to say, and I know we've talked about it before, but the loop is giving her trouble. And I honestly don't see why they couldn't have replaced it with a different jump in the short program after 
the, so many mistakes on it at the Olympics. I personally think that would have been a smart move and maybe she would have been in a better position if she had done a different solo jump in the short. Yeah, she she kept the loop, but she did make the entry easier than the program in the Olympics. So in the Olympics, she did traveling threes into it, but this time it looks like she just did the classic like cross entry into it but you know I feel like it's still like a bad omen when you messed up that jump so many times that it's both technical and mental at that point that you're just going to that jump like oh can't can't fuck this one up and you know that that's a lot of pressure to hold together yeah I think she really wanted to come back with the loop in the shore at least at worlds because she had messed up with it at the Olympics because I also read that she ended up switching out her jumps in the long program and removed uh, all the loops that she had in the long. But I think despite her mistakes early on in the long program, she really rallied and pulled the rest of the program together. So I just think she's had a very, very long season and hopefully she gets to take some time to rest after this. All right, that's a wrap for the men's and ladies event. Let's move on to pairs and ice dance. So now at this point, Emma has to drop, unfortunately. So you will just be stuck with me and Sammy talking about pairs and ice dance. (laughs) Okay, so now on to uh, ice dance and pairs. So let's start off with pairs first. So Sammy, what do you think about the field at Worlds this year with pairs? It was a little bit strange. We saw like pretty much like the top like, five or six pairs from the Olympics just kind of not be in this competition. So that changes things up a lot. So what are your thoughts? Certainly a largely weakened field without both China and Russia there, which are traditionally the sort of strongest strongest countries Mm -hmm. in the pair skating. And so with that being said, I personally feel like it was the most weakened field out of all of the four skating disciplines here at this world championship. So with that being said, it was also sort of weird to me to not see Tamara Muscovina, especially after we saw her at the Olympics, a really famous yeah. Paris coach for Russia. And that was uh, a little strange, especially because she will probably not be traveling to competitions anymore after this season. I think it was kind of her last hurrah. Yeah, I feel like her name and Russian pair skating are basically like one in one. She's so tiny, but she's so just crazy iconic at this point. Another thing that I was really personally mad about is the pairs short program not being uploaded to Peacock because yeah, all the other freaking events all had replays most of the time i'm like working right when these events are going on because of the time difference of these events in france so i won't be able to like watch them until like after work so pair short i was expecting a replay but then it turns out they never uploaded it and my hunch is that it's probably due to the stupid commentator drama so i'm sure you guys have but if you've been following the news on like figure skating Twitter, you're probably aware of Simon Reed and Nikki Slater, the two commentators that said a bunch of controversial shit just to <laughs> be very concise about it, and that they got removed uh, rightfully so, and they should have definitely not be saying all that dumb shit. But just in general, it was just really annoying that we won't we won't be able to see the coverage for that. So. I mean, all the knowledge I have on the pair short for this discussion is just, like, perusing skatingscores.com. But honestly, like, it wasn't too far from our podium predictions, to be honest, for pairs. So it wasn't a huge, huge deal. Um, There was only a couple of pairs at the top to watch in the first place. But, yeah, that was just annoying. So for the rest of the competition, we actually had Ted Barton commentate. So as we know, Ted is a Terry's favorite. So uh, I guess he comes in and just replaces the other commentators, which is kind of funny because in a way, Ted is also somewhat controversial, even though he's Canadian. There's been a lot of controversy about Ted, you know, trying to really promote the Russian girls and the Atari camp and really softening Atari's image to make her palatable to the Western audience because he is one of the main Western commentators commentating at some of these big events. With that said, let's actually jump into talking about some of the pairs. So 
First pair that we want to talk about is Kane and LaDuke, who had to withdraw. So, Sammy, what are your thoughts about there? I'm obviously very, very, very sad for Ashley and just the pair in general. Yeah, I definitely echo that. It's tough because they had such a huge opportunity at this competition to come out and win a medal and have potentially the U.S. have two medals, even gold and silver in pairs Mm -hmm. at a world championships, which would be unheard of if you were to ask me a year ago. I would have never predicted that being possible. So that's definitely sad, but even more sad is for Ashley and her health in this situation, especially because she has had a history of concussions, has taken some really rough falls in competition before and this you know unfortunately just makes that even worse so something that I'm unsure about as well if I have to check on this and maybe with Alexa's and Brandon's win the U.S. has still secured maybe three pair spots but I don't think that they have yeah I feel like that's the theme of this year's world is there was just like Un, like you would never ever dream of a podium like this and that was basically every single podium uh here at this entry maybe minus like the men's podium but so like it was really yeah was shuffled around <laughs> yeah it was all shuffled around but really really unfortunate for Ashley and I think she also knew since they did well in the um they did well in the short program so I think that if they really put down a great free skate they would have had it in the bag uh so it was really unfortunate and I think from what we saw she fell twice before the fall that actually took her out I think the other two falls like she fell pretty hard but she didn't hit like anywhere near like the area above her shoulders I think the first fall she had was on a side-by-side jump the second one was on a throw and then the third one that she got really injured on was on a side by side jump. And I think when she fell, she hit pretty hard. And it looked like to me that it hit. she hit the side of her jaw. So that definitely would affect her head and probably re-triggered her concussion that she had before. And it's really unfortunate that, you know, she had to have this issue come up again and I think that's what makes pair skating so scary like I honestly cannot ever think of you know doing pair skating like it's at the level of like gymnastics scary where I feel like Mm -hmm. it's I know skating is very scary in general with all those people doing quads and whatnot but I think pair definitely is the most scary due to a lot of lateral rotation because most other disciplines in skating all the rotations are done vertically which is inherently somewhat safer while in gymnastics and pairs you do see a lot more of that lateral um, rotation such as into twists and all that so definitely definitely very scary discipline yeah. yeah yeah so and she posted like a really sad video on instagram and i was like i cannot watch this like i just feel so bad but I, fingers crossed, like, she gets better. I think that's the most important thing, more than grabbing any medal, is that the athlete's health is protected. So I'm glad that she seems to be doing okay, and I hope that, you know, this, like, she can just be healthy. And I think now on less of a sad note, we can go to the exact opposite spectrum of that. Uh, to talk about the other U.S. pair, Alexa and Brandon, who obviously killed it, nailed it in both the shore as well as the free. And I think Alexa's journey, I think the reason I mentioned this in our podium predictions Mm -hmm. video as well, the reason I was rooting for them so hard was I think Alexa specifically, her journey was just so special that she's just such a fighter you know, even after skating with her husband, she wanted to continue to skate more, like got a new partner, which as we will talk about later, like Vanessa James and Eric Rafford did, it takes a long time for two people in pairs to gel and for them to be able to do it that fast and bring home a gold medal at Worlds is pretty, pretty impressive. So I don't know what your thoughts are, Sammy. Yeah, no, it's exactly. I think that... It speaks a lot to Alexa's strength that she's seemingly gotten 
better and more consistent over the years, I would say, uh, especially in adapting to skate with a new partner. Um, I feel like they've had the exact right trajectory this year in their season. And uh, I just think it takes a very special type of athlete and a special type of mental strength to be able to put the skate of your life kind of together after having to see such a devastating scene unfold, devastating Mm -hmm. and unexpected scene unfold before you. We could see from the video that Alexa and Brandon knew exactly what was going on, right? Because the energy in the crowd changed and Mm -hmm. they had an altered time to skate and they had extra warm up time on the ice where they could Mm -hmm. do a few jumps. And that normally isn't something that you get in the same way before Mm -hmm. taking the ice to skate as the final pair competing for a gold medal. So Mm -hmm. it was good to see them change the energy in the arena from one of sort of despair and uh, sadness for Ashley into a good uh, moment that they could, you know, have for themselves, but also just for the U.S. team in general and even sort of carrying their teammates uh, who went through that difficult moment on their shoulders through to the gold medal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you're in such high pressure conditions, I feel like everything has to go right for you to feel comfortable to deliver the skate of your life, because even the smallest difference or smallest, you know, misalignment of expectation versus reality can really you know, mentally rattle you. And they were both able to, you know, stay strong. And I think this was so funny. But when she realized that they did it, she was so happy. Like, that joy was just great to see that. I feel like that is like Olympic winning level, like just joy. I (laughs) she was like jumping up. And I know, Ted Barton is such a meme, but he was like, oh, yeah, Alexa seems like she has the energy to go out there and do another program. Exactly. (laughs) And she honestly looked like she did. And you just like, it was just pure joy. And I think that is what skating is for, is living for those moments and dreaming of those moments and making it happen. So I just I just thought that was wonderful, wonderful to watch. Yeah. I, I feel like Alexa is the type of person to do double run throughs and <laughs> it oh, showed yeah. in that moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, yeah, 100%. Yeah. She's like, Brandon, let's get up, get your ass up. We're going to get do run throughs until we get it clean. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's paid and, off. It's paid off. So, yeah. Um, sort of speaking of that same type of happy energy, I think that the Japanese pair of Mira and Kara have a very fresh, exciting energy to them. So what did you think about their Skate Hero Worlds, Kathy? Yeah, no, I really love them. And when we were doing podium predictions, I put them as first, even though here they got the second is because of their PCS scores. And if you go back to see that in the short program, they actually did got get first for a PCS. And In their free program, even though they struggled with some of the technical elements, they still got second in the PCS. So it definitely does speak to their just incredible skating quality. And I think that's something apparent in a lot of Japanese skaters and just their knee bend, their soft edges. And I think this pair definitely has a special, unique look to them that I personally really like. Of course, skating is very subjective. Uh, I know they had more of a rough free, and I feel like there was a lot of pressure on them because there's probably a lot of people saying like, hey, you know, this is Japan's moment to shine with Russia not into competition, with China not into competition, you know, in so many fields, right? We, like, in men's, in ladies, in pairs, like, this is Japan's chance to bring home a medal in pretty much, like, three out of the four disciplines. So, and and this one could have potentially been a gold. So I'm sure that there was a lot of pressure um, through them. And Sammy, you bring up a good point that I'll let you talk about, but they actually have a pretty big age gap. I actually didn't know that Ruichi was quite a bit older than Riku. Yeah, exactly. I think 
is Riku 22? Is that right? She's, I thought she was 20. Oh, am maybe. I, am I yeah. crazy? I thought it was a nine year difference, but maybe. Oh, I'm... wow. That's definitely possible. I forget. But yeah, regardless, they have a big age gap. And I think at, at first I was like, of course, you know, they'll continue skating together and everything through next season and hopefully the next Olympic cycle, because I think they have a great opportunity to maybe win a medal at the next Olympics. Mm-hmm. But I don't know enough about their partnership and uh, Ryuchi's Mm -hmm. plans to know that and be able to say it, but I certainly hope that they do continue because they have so much potential and they're just, they've finally broken through the scene this year from Mm -hmm. really almost, some would say, out of nowhere after last season. So it speaks to their commitment to the sport and uh, ability to train hard and improve. So I think the one thing I will say is that one of the reasons I really hope to see them in future seasons is because I felt like because they have such such strong skating skills and they have great interpretation of the music and a wonderful energy together as a pair, I felt like their music choices maybe were a bit lacking in terms of showcasing that in the most complex way possible and the most beautiful way possible, at least especially I think maybe in their free dance, uh, free free skate, it just fell a little flat for me in terms of the music choice, even though their emotion was spot on. Uh, Maybe not this time as much because of the falls and and difficulties, but in general, you know? So hopefully that they can improve on their music choices to find what showcases their qualities best in future seasons. Yeah, yeah. And after their free skate, which was a little bit rougher, I honestly was like scared for a second because I thought Ruichi was injured after the program because she looked so concerned about him. I'm not sure if it's like I think she was concerned about him because he one looked very tired and two Mm -hmm. I was like oh is he injured but also I think in the program she made a lot of mistakes including doubling the jump so I think in pairs there's always this interesting dynamic of like whoever made the mistake you obviously don't want to blame your partner right it's a team effort but it's really hard sometimes in a pressured moment in such like a high stakes moment to you know not get upset and I was honestly thinking that she was worried that he might be upset with her but Mm. honestly he was just like such a positive like ray of energy I think she was really disappointed in herself after her mistakes but I think what makes them gel really well as a pair is you know they turn that the the vibe essentially like right back around like in the kiss and cry like he was smiling through the roof like I think like that's what I love about some of the Japanese skaters is they have such great sportsmanship they're just so happy and they're so genuinely like loving being out there in the ice and that's what sports is all about so even though they had a rough free skate they still kept that energy kind of alive after that so really really proud of them and I love them and hope to see them in future seasons yeah I guess transitioning into a pair that we don't necessarily expect to see next season would be Vanessa and Eric I think they got super super lucky in this situation Mm -hmm. of course no one would have expected them to win a bronze medal at world. They definitely are both talented pair skaters and talented skaters, but in my opinion, I don't think that they have fully gelled as a team, which how could you expect them to after only, I think, about a little bit over a year skating together? Is that right, Kathy? I think so, roughly. I don't remember the exact timeline. Yeah, exactly. So there's only so much that you can improve and be able to align with your partner after you know that short time of skating together so with that being said I just feel that they are each doing a bit of their own thing on the ice sometimes and this could be because they're so focused on getting the elements done and getting everything down on paper that they can't get to that next level of really focusing on each other and skating in the moment. Something else I noticed in relation to that, and this may be a partnership thing, who knows, but 
I feel like Vanessa always seems like a more positive person and more is more satisfied generally with their performances and their scores and their progress than Eric is. She had a terrible experience with her previous partner. Um, we won't go into that, but she suffered through a, a lot of awful things with her previous partner, uh, Morgan Cypress, and that whole drama and scandal. So I feel like she has something in it to really, you know, prove it to herself that she can do this and she can keep fighting. And I think that's wonderful. But with that being said, it almost feels like she has to convince him sometimes in the Chris and Cry to be proud of what they've done and mm. proud of their scores or their placements. It just sort of give me, gives me weird vibes. And I honestly feel a little sad for her that she has to kind of help him put on a smile. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I, I do think if they did continue, they're both getting sort of up there in age, but if they do continue, I think they would greatly improve in their connection to each other and hopefully have better material. I didn't love the falling by Harry Styles. I thought it was a bit depressing and ironic to uh, <laughs> think of music about falling when you're trying to not fall, but that's me. <laughs> I do not want to be skating though. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I'll listen to Harry Styles any other time, yeah. but not when I'm skating and yeah. the lyrics are saying falling. <laughs> um, but no, I agree with you on the vibe comment. You know, just outside of skating, I feel like their partnership, just the formation of their partnership was a little iffy in terms of just kind of the the concept behind it because it was weird because there was a mini scandal with you know Eric and Megan do Hamill his previous partner about how they had commitments to skate together in shows and whatnot and then you know he kind of went on and did his own thing I don't know these people but I'm just saying there hasn't been the strongest like clearest communication between the two when Eric formed his partnership with Vanessa and I think in a way that that's like weird from Vanessa too right but then also like Vanessa had this like scandal with her previous partner Morgan Seabrook so it's like it's just like bad vibes and um to your comment at the very beginning I'm not sure if we're seeing this pair again or not because it seems weird that they're gonna put in all this effort go through all this drama to find another pair like maybe it's because they want to like push for another olympic season but if it's something more long term then i don't know Callie, did you want to talk about any other pairs or do you think we can move on to dance now we can do dance sounds good i think dance was a happier event in general uh, than yes. pairs. Yes. <laughs> although alexa was very happy and that was good yeah no yeah. i think alexa's happiness just like overtook for all the other bad things that happened in pairs. Definitely. So for dance, we had our top three as expected. Uh, our predictions were pretty much correct. Uh, yeah, I, I have... screwed up this one. <laughs> you guys were right. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was only one, you know, one yeah, hopeful flip switch. Flip flop. Yeah. yeah. It's Much fine. better than our predictions in the other events. Oh my god. Yeah. Continue. Oh, yeah. So we had the French winning, and then we had Hubble and Donahue and Chalk and Bates. Overall, just a great event. Not just the top 10, but even further down. I felt like everyone had very original and interesting concepts to their programs by and it's large. It's because they all freaking train at the Montreal School, who <laughs> is the freaking queen and kings of packaging. And it just, I feel like. Even when I was watching down to, like, t the latter parts of top 10 and top 15, I was like, they're all so fucking good. Exactly. And it's freaking Marie France. I think the third ranked Canadian team, I don't remember their names, but they did this program to, like, the Rio soundtrack. And I think they're also with Marie France. It, it left me feeling like, oh, it's is a one away all for them? And they were, like, jumping up and down so excited <laughs> with their score. That just goes to show I know nothing about levels in ice dance, but it's honestly, I have gotten better. I okay. studied on ice dance this time around. I good, can actually you can pull the weight here. <laughs> I don't know about that. You're the one who's actually ice danced before, but uh, not I, with a partner. <laughs> but like, I I feel like I'm slowly starting to understand what the acronyms mean. I can like. I started like I when I was watching towards the end I would test myself I'm just like 
good. They would do an element, and I was like, I think it's this. And then it was right, and I was like, fuck yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm only good at identifying the choreo slide moves. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. The one, <laughs> it's like a choreographic sequence one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, and, and Ted has no idea about ice dance either. It's very clear from this commentary. He that's always so says, funny. Looks like they lost a level or two there. Level three, level four, level. He two. just basically reads like what pops up, like yeah. probably on the back end for him. So, but oh yeah. well. But anyways, let's go and talk about our favorite Gabby and Guillaume, G and G, double G, yes. whatever we call them. They're spectacular. Like we said before, unless all hell broke loose, they were definitely going to get the gold medal. Like, there was no way that anyone would outskate them unless the world came burning down. And it was just such an incredible moment for them because, yes, they had their Olympic moment, which was fantastic. And I think perhaps this might be their last season. Um, so finishing it off in a world in front of your home audience is like a dream come true. You know, close to like Sway and Han finishing their kind of career at the Beijing Olympics. So also with a full audience, because this is the first competition that we've seen in a long time where there's actually a full audience. So that's that's crazy. We haven't talked about at all this season how the crowd reacted to any of these skaters because there was no crowd to talk about. Mm -hmm. So that was just, you know, like fantastic. I love their free dance I think Gabby's dress is just absolutely gorgeous like it's stunning and I think they're just so sophisticated and so elegant and their twizzles are unmatched I think even to the naked eye or to someone who's not technically versed in ice dance you can tell that their twizzles are different than the other pairs like they go into it without any of the tentativeness that a lot of the pairs go into in the top like five or six they just go like full send there's so much speed so much unison i'm glad you bring that up kathy because i really love how they have these sharp sort of motions after they finish each of the twizzles in their sequence so even before they go into the you know little transition turns or steps in between each twizzle you know main twizzle portion they have kind of a moment where they pause and do a very sharp motion mm -hmm. and it's very fluid at the same time which I really love seeing and especially when they come out of the full twizzle sequence and are able to really uh, have a sort of climax of energy out of it I think it's wonderful yeah so. it's very crisp their yes. twizzles are very crisp Definitely. like as crisp as a white iron shirt oh great description <laughs> oh yeah awesome yeah so speaking of shirts I think that I was happy personally <laughs> to see that Guillaume went back to his sort of a brown gold shirt for the free dance from, I like the red shirt as well in the Olympics. And I think it was a good choice in the Olympics because it really makes you like pop and stand out the red. But I felt that along with Gabby's beautiful like gold mm -hmm. dress, this sort of bronzy shirt works a lot better maybe I agree um, I agree yeah and so that was nice to see I think I started the season maybe enjoying this free dance from them more than some other people that I've talked to about it I can say that I have enjoyed some of their other programs maybe equally as much or more than this one as an audience as, as an audience yeah however I think that today because they were visibly less concerned about winning they had less to prove to themselves and others at this world championships than at the olympics and therefore i felt like i was able to relax and appreciate more of those little small small moments like in between the twizzles or as they were building the final minute of their program uh, in the intricacy of it without the olympic pressure so i just thought it was a beautiful way to end their season and we could talk about them all day because they're so wonderful, but I also just love their post-win interview. I don't know if you watched that, Kathy, if you had time. No, to not that. yet. Yeah, so a, a little bit after, it was before the medal ceremony, but right after they won, <clears throat> I just thought it was very sweet because 
they weren't even asked to, but they were translating everything they said in French back to English to, you know, reach as much of the crowd as they could. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was really sweet because there were moments where Guillaume in particular was very uh, at a loss for words in terms of the emotion he was feeling and the beautiful end of their journey that started training in France as little kids skating together, I think maybe even from the age of like six or something. And it would keep panning to, I think in the audience, I believe his parents maybe, Um, which is really cute because then he could see them on the screen. I love that. I love that. And you mentioning them skating together since like little kids. I, I love that because I remember one of the funniest posts that Gabby, honestly, Gabby's Instagram is really, really funny. That is and, true. <laughs> um, one of her old posts, it was like pictures of her and Guillaume when they were skating really, really young together. And it was so funny. And I think her caption was something like, do swag, do swag or tujo do swag or something like that um but basically she was just like swag swag always swag and i was like and it was pictures of her like as a little kid with you know and it's just awesome to see them that they had such a long career together and that connection that they built together just kept building and building and building year after year and it's just so so special we can talk about them forever but we should also talk about silver which you and emma predicted correctly would be hubble and donahue and now honestly when i watched them skate i was like okay that makes sense i think it was just like the hopeful chalk and baits fan in me that was like maybe they can you know get that silver you know and turn the olympics results around they could have yeah could have yeah but i would say like honestly hubble and donahue really did grow on me a lot this season i think i think (laughs) i think they're programs last season didn't really do as much for me as their programs this season I honestly really like their song choices both in the short dance and in the free dance this time around I think the short dance is what drew me into them first that Janet Jackson program is absolutely phenomenal just highlights all the great things that they're good for including just that strength the sharpness that knee slide at the beginning I love that I'm honestly like so scared for knee slides because they're so close together I'm like what if they slide too much and Zach just slides into mad here or something exactly Um, but it's just very choreographically beautiful and I think their free dance though more traditional like for example like Piper and Paul also Mm -hmm. had a very traditional free dance and I think I'm associating the two because their costumes are literally like very the same similar. cotton candy purple pink blue both very flowy traditional music choices but I think Hubble and Donahue's was a little bit more unique like it was more edgy it felt like I was listening to like an indie lyrical piece a little True. But I, I honestly started liking it a lot, and they skated big, as per usual. And I think I would also say that though their twizzles are not as sharp as Gabby and Guillaume's, I think they still go into it with less tentativeness than Chalk and Bates does. So that might be just a difference there. And also their one footstep sequence also felt perhaps like a little bit bigger. And I would say that I love Chalk and Bates because their lifts are so, so, so unique. I would give Hubble and Donahue credit to that first flying rotational lift that they did where he just kind of like swings her up and she's like flying in the air on his shoulders. I was like, that is freaking beautiful. And I absolutely loved it. But Sammy, what do you think? Yeah, I don't have much to add, Kathy. That was a great summary. (laughs) Yeah, you pointed out a lot of the things that I love about them. And I think going off of that in terms of you know we we've always known they've had big powerful skating lots of energy and I think that this season even when all the pressure was on and even when they had setbacks like losing to Chalk and Bates at nationals I think that this season they had a lot more palpable trust in themselves and developed an ability to control their power and amplitude in a way to not let it get carried away and lead to mistakes which I feel has been their downfall in the past. And 
in some past seasons has, you know, led to them falling mm-hmm. at a time when they were about to win a medal, mm-hmm. like Zach at the last 2018 Olympics or right. things like that, where it feels like they've just really put those types of moments behind them and skating for themselves for the end of their career. So it was just beautiful to see that they were able to do their absolute best at this competition and come away with a silver medal, yes, but be able to have a nice finish to their career and be happy with their progress this season. I have to say, going back to your point about the free dance music, Kathy, I originally this season did not like their free dance music choice because I just felt like, and even at Nationals, I felt like it fell a bit flat compared to what I would think they're capable of. But in watching it at Worlds and at the Olympics, I think it is the right choice for a sort of swan song, you know, piece in terms of the lyrical quality and the freedom that the music carries with it. So I've become more of a fan of their free dance, even though I do think Chalk and Bates, absolutely, their free dance is more unique and has led me to really feel like Chalk and Bates can, you know, potentially outscore Hubble and Donahue in the free dance more and more this yeah. season. Yeah. And I would just say one last thing is that was their pretty much the last performance in their careers competitively exactly. together. And I think it's really hard for skaters to, you know, skate that program because it's your last shot. You want to leave the last good impression for both the audience and for you yourself. It's really hard to not let those emotions get the best of you. And they definitely control that very well. But it was just honestly so touching for me to see when Maddie started crying, when they were on the podium receiving their medals together Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I am about to cry <laughs> yeah. as well. And I think it was just a beautiful last hurrah for them. And I think that free dance was a beautiful way to go out with that kind of softer music, almost like a you know nice closure to like a chapter in their lives. Absolutely. So I guess moving on to Chalk and Bates, they also seemed happy with their medal, although of course they would have wanted to be silver. I think I will definitely miss seeing this uh, outer space free, <laughs> free dance and honestly the makeup and the costuming and the silver lipstick it's all very iconic and in particular I think their low lift closer to the beginning where she sweeps the ice and it looks like she's just discovering new territory on a new planet I <laughs> think <laughs> yeah that image of her in that lift has been used I think it's so many times so pretty it's yeah. so fucking pretty and difficult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I would just fall onto the ice and just start rolling away. <laughs> I tried to do that. <laughs> rolling away into outer space. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I think I've said this in previous recaps, perhaps in the Olympics discussion, where I do feel like they have to get really, really creative and push the boundaries in the sport of ice dance to be able to keep up with Hubble and Donahue's skating skills and inherent power and speed. And maybe this can sometimes look like covering up some of the areas in which maybe their skating skills are not as strong, Mm -hmm. but I really appreciate them pushing the sport in this way. And I think it pushes other teams to try new things and not just go with the same lyrical stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think they've definitely left their mark on the sport in so many ways and are beautiful skaters to watch regardless. I also don't know if they're continuing, but I hope I think they are. I think they they are. are, Yeah, which is such a great opportunity (laughs) for them because if Hubble and Donahue are not going to be here and Gabby and Guillaume aren't going to be here, you know, guess, guess who's going to be first now. So yeah, except for the Russian, but but maybe the Russians (laughs) won't be able to compete this year. So. Oh yeah. I don't know. Like, Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, They could be first at worlds next year. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying, I almost forgot that they can Nikki exist, but anyways, I know it's, it's easy to forget sometimes, but yeah, I would just echo whatever you said completely. I think, so I learned that is a curve lift, 
thank you. That low entry, like, oh, beautiful. I think their curve lift was just freaking magical. Um, And I would just say this again, perhaps one of their weaknesses is just like some of the tentativeness in the twizzle sequence and can see that perhaps their one foot step sequence isn't as big uh, in comparison to Hubble and on Hugh. I would say, yes, their concepts are so unique. I honestly think that only they can pull it off. I think if anyone else wore those costumes and skated to that music, I would be like, what the actual fuck? (laughs) Um, But because it's Batty and Evan, they take the weirdest concept and bring it to life. Like, I still try not to LOL in my seat sometimes at the beginning when the they voice start the program and, Evan, like, they're, like, apart. And then Evan looks like he's, like, an astronaut just landed and he's, like, looking around and Maddie's, like, what is this creature man person? And he's, like, oh, I've never seen that before, but she's beautiful. <laughs> You know, when I first saw it, I was like, what? Um, But honestly, they like, I feel like for one of those moments, you have to commit 2000% or or else it just would not look good and it will look cringy. But they commit 2000%. They commit 3000%. So they definitely sold that very well. And I think another Ice Dance pair that's definitely worth mentioning is the Italians who came in fourth. They're very, a very, very technically sound pair and I it's great to also see you know a team from a camp that is not from Marie France's Montreal camp which is great because if honestly I feel like whenever I watch the ice dance event I just feel like I'm watching a giant party of super large family you know (laughs) yeah because they just they just all know each other but I would say I'm very impressed by them I think they're very their style is very traditional lyrical and I think they're also a little bit older, and I think that speaks to, like, the maturity of it as well, of their skating and their music choices. So they're very, very sophisticated. And I think, like, I like their free dance quite a bit. I think the music was a little flat, but I did like the beginning where the talking word over the music, I feel like that's become more of a trend in program music in the last, like, couple of years because, mm-hmm. one, they have loud you know, lyrics in music, but it's kind of like the contemporary, modern, I'm going to put deep words over Mm -hmm. instrumental music. And I think that it was like, oh, love is powerful or, you know, like something like like that, like stuff like that. But honestly, um, Sakamoto's program music also had like the spoken words thing. Yeah. Um, And also one of my favorite programs from Gabby and Guillaume was Find You, uh, yeah. I think it was the program that they did last year. We didn't get to see it at Worlds because of COVID. Yeah. But I know, Sammy, you and Emma actually also did a duet to that in a show Ooh. that I am absolutely the biggest fan of. So I would just say I'm very much so a fan of this, like, talking talking word trend. I, I feel like it's it gets mixed reviews. Like, some people hate it. Some people like it. I think when done well, it's, like, poetry. Oh, nice. Definitely. Yeah. No, thanks for the shout out there, Kathy. I can say <laughs> You're like, stop exposing me. I can say, though, that Emma and I actually, when we were practicing the spoken word part and trying to do Gabby and Guillaume's choreography or parts of it to replicate it on ice, we actually posted on Instagram and Gabby watched the video that we tagged her in. <gasps> Yeah. No freaking yeah, 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 yeah. way. I screenshot it so I have proof. So Oh yeah. my god. That <laughs> That's was crazy. Exactly. That was probably one of the best moments of my life, not gonna lie, but <laughs> yeah, my claim to fame there. But wow. not really. <laughs> Moving on, to- I just echo everything about the Italians. I really like them. I think they could maybe stick around for one more season and have their time to shine with these teams. Other top teams are tiring as well, but they are older. I think they're both in their 30s. Oh, wow. So, That's crazy you know. that they're still out here and going strong. Exactly. Like, I almost thought that they w- we wouldn't see them this season, but then maybe they hadn't competed as much due to COVID and stuff, but then they were here again. And I was like, I, o- I feel like I always forget about them, which I feel bad about because mm-hmm. they're so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but 
yeah, they're just kind of doing their own thing. They're happy and love skating, and it's great. We can go into Piper and Paul. I think I don't know why. Maybe it was just in a annoyed or frustrated mood when I was watching some of the dance, but I just don't really know if I can enjoy their skating as much this season. I just don't really like this Beatles free dance. I think it's sort of tired and they are doing it and executing everything right. Like here, they seem to be giving it their all and they definitely had a better outing, I felt like, than at the Olympics oh, yeah, in definitely. their free dance. Yeah, but it just still felt lacking to me and I think that kind of showed in the scores, honestly, because I think they would have wanted higher scores. I don't think it was their season's best. And I just think the costuming for Paul could be better. I would appreciate different music. Of course, it's a kind of classic song, and I'm sure it's a crowd pleaser and a crowd favorite in general. But to me, it wasn't Olympic season music. Yeah, and I would say, like, neither was their rhythm dance, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, it's very unique. too forced. Yeah, like, it's very unique. I would say, like, they did try to, play up almost le- that like chalk and Bates level unique list with like mm-hmm. the orange costume and that flair but honestly it was just it, it it didn't just hit quite the right spot and of course this is all subjective from our opinions yeah. they're athletically still doing great things out there on the ice but I just don't think they're as good as you know telling the story carrying that across skating big having that technical precision as some of the other pairs so it's just yeah it's also unfortunate to say just it it feels like a lot of these teams in the fourth fifth sixth place if their program's not super memorable they kind of just fall through the minds and the cracks of the memories of a lot of people so yeah yeah I I would say the same thing but I would say like honestly another pair that actually came in after them in sixth place Lila and Lewis from Great Britain honestly left a bigger impression or a mark in my brain definitely um especially because I love their Lion King program I think it was just like such a beautiful energy that they gave and it was perfect I think their short rhythm dance it's good but I think their free dance is what stood out to me definitely I feel like their Lion King was the perfect choice considering that just in terms of age and the fact that they're kind of a shorter team perhaps than some of the other competitors, they're older, more mature competitors. I thought it was a really smart choice to bring a piece like Lion King in for this Olympic season because yes, it's so unique. It's also a complex story and something they can portray on the ice and it capitalizes on their youthful energy and Mm -hmm. excitement for the crowd so I felt like that was that came in handy here especially because I felt like it was a nice sense of release from the more heavy pieces that we see around it like for example they're in close contention with the Canadian team of Laurence and Nikolaj, Nikolai? Nikolai, <laughs> uh, I think. Nikolai from Canada, um, who I believe were skating to Gladiator in their free dance. And Laurence and Nikolai unfortunately had some errors in their program, but overall I felt like the performance quality and interpretation of Lila and Lewis, along with their music choice, was better than mm-hmm. Laurence and Nikolai. So that's an area in which they have an edge over perhaps their close competitors Mm -hmm. in future seasons and I'm just so excited to be able to continue to watch Lila and Lewis progress over the next Olympic cycle because I think we'll see maybe some innovation almost similar to Chalk and Bates from Mm -hmm. them in the future. Yeah yeah perhaps and speaking of innovation I think honestly one of the other more innovative teams that even though they didn't even place in the top Five here at Worlds, their program like stuck to the back of my brain, and that's Smart and Diaz from Spain. And I think, unfortunately, they didn't have the best outing for their free dance. I think their rhythm dance is honestly like I like it a lot, but I think their free dance is my favorite in the season. Mm-hmm. And I think that it was just unfortunate they had like a couple of uh, little stumbles. I think in a in in their step sequence in one of the 
I think it was a circular step where Olivia had like a slight mistake coming out of a twizzle and the other one was just like a balance catch when Adrian was doing the choreography to the sword fight at the very end. I'm still trying to figure out the story here and I'm just like are they battling each other in this program? Like is that what you got Sammy or what's your interpretation of this like program like yeah. a story see it would help if i was more familiar with the actual story of mask of Zorro. same uh, no same i'm just like maybe i should read up on mask of Zorro, but um yeah it felt like he was battling someone else for her but that could just be like gender roles in society coming down into my brain trying to convince me of something but i also don't know mask of Zorro, so yeah i no, mean they I- were they were both doing sword fighting against each other at one point right yeah, no, like that's, that, 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 yeah, that's where he had, like, okay, the balance so check. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's what I thought, um, because I was like, I think they're fighting each other in the story. Okay, this is, again, okay. speculation. That he then he then fights the kind of the crowd at the end, then. Yeah, yeah no, it's yeah. just, it, it's my, it, it's just, no, I think he doesn't fight the crowd at the end. I think he slits her throat, question mark, because she ends oh. up in a position where, She's kind of, like, bent over with her, like, neck, like, up. Okay. So I think that that is that, my interpretation. That makes sense. Then again, people no, who are listening sense. to this who probably know the story of Masters are, are like, what the fuck are these people talking about? That is but, very true. But we will but anyway, up. Don't worry. Yes, we will, we will educate ourselves. But um, that's just pure speculation. I like your interpretation the... better, Kathy. I honestly yeah, feel like I yeah. haven't paid enough attention to the intricacies of uh who's fighting who i'm just like so swept <laughs> away by the actual sword sword motions <laughs> yeah to the next level but i would also say her green dress is to die for her. like probably one of the best costuming in my opinion i just love it it's so unique it's so just elegant love it yeah i wish and hope that they will continue skating together not sure what will happen Really? I th- yeah, because I think Adrian is older than her by how by much? a good bit. I'm not sure exactly how much, but I think she's relatively young, like maybe 24, 23. Uh-huh. And he's 30, almost 30. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he's, he's getting like... married to Madison Hubble. And I so know. Maybe they'll just be off in their married life. I know, and... and... And Madison Hubble is retiring, so maybe they're just like, oh, it's time to, you know, just retire together. Who knows? Who Who knows? knows? But my, selfishly for myself as the audience, I love the two together. So I'm just like, I would love to continue to continue to see them out on the ice. And I think Olivia Smart is honestly one of those. I I think we hear a lot about Madison Hubble and uh, Alexa Kira for being feisty blondes. I honestly think Olivia is also like a feisty blonde, but just like a more subdued, more inwardly feisty than outwardly feisty. Yeah, I agree. She has a very calm energy. Yeah, but she's like stern. Like if she was my coach, I would be scared. Yeah, me too. You know? But I love that. I love that for her. Well, just one last thought I had on the ice dance was that I felt like this was the first event that I could closely watch Daisuke skate ice dance (laughs) because I just feel like he's competed at maybe smaller events or I didn't have time to watch all of Japanese nationals and Mm -hmm. didn't get to really see his transition to ice dance Mm -hmm. as clearly as this competition And again, this goes back to what we were saying earlier about the level of ice dance right now across the world and across different teams. I mean, Daisuke is skating with Marina Zueva and she is obviously an amazing choreographer, but I just felt like their programs, Daisuke and Kana, had beautifully interesting programs, particularly I thought their rhythm dance was up there with the, honestly up there with the French in terms of uh, uniqueness and originality in the rhythm dance to be honest like they took a different approach and made the most of it I know they're not in the top teams at all but I really enjoyed watching it and I wish we could just see them again 
maybe it'll continue. Maybe Desco will be skating in Ice Dance until he's like 86 or something. <laughs> yeah, who knows? The man is like just defying age at this moment, um, doing the transition to Ice Dance. And I think that just speaks to Ice Dance difficulty because I feel like to a lot of audiences or fans who may be new to skating, at least like for me, especially when I was at first, like years and years ago, getting into skating is ice dance always was less stressful for me to watch because it was just like, oh, no one's probably going to make big mistakes because it's not like in like singles where like you jump and there's like this like dramatic fall or in pairs and the girl gets chucked and she like falls and it's just like, oh God, that's like scary, right? But I think now that I actually understand a lot more about ice dance, I, I, dance, I get so nervous whenever pairs do their twizzle sequence because it is in my opinion probably one of the hardest elements like like I'm just imagining in a hypothetical world if I did ice dance I would like be scared shitless of the twizzle sequences um because it's just so precise and you know I think that's what Daisuke ended up messing up in the rhythm dance which I absolutely love like similarly to you Sammy love the concept of their rhythm dance but I just think that you know, he did mess up on that twizzle sequence, and that just speaks to how difficult Ice Dance is. So, Ice Dance may not look hard, but it is hard as fuck. Yeah, and I think just that mental pressure of knowing that you have to be perfect on everything, and so I think that mental pressure in Ice Dance is perhaps more (laughs) um, than something like singles, where if you're the top man in the world you can maybe mess up on one jump or something like that and still mm-hmm. win but not yeah. so <laughs> in dance you know unless you're gabbing you they can probably mess up once and still win but <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense and I would just say like to kind of close off this section is just talking a little bit about the medal ceremonies I think honestly I'm the type of person where I just watch the event and then after the event's over I'm just like okay you know, my job here is done. I watch my skating. I hardly ever watched a medal ceremony, but I mm-hmm. honestly found myself watching the medal ceremony quite a bit for this world's championships just because I felt like the interplay of different countries and the diversity of countries that we saw at the podium made the medal ceremonies just such a joy and blessing to watch just to soak in that sportsmanship of a lot of people's last raws and I think the dance team the dance podium was no exception to that and back to our point of them being all part of this big family it's almost like like a freaking family exhibition or whatnot at these competitions but it was just so amazing they went straight to like the hugs which is like so you know like I think some of the other podiums like everyone's like very formal it's like oh you know congratulations like little bow here little bow there but I think they just have all their like hugs and then they held hands um in a uh, when they were standing on the podium and I honestly thought this was really funny when I was watching the hand holding part because I feel like I don't know if it's just me but it feels like Maddie H and Gabby are like better friends and besties like than Gabby and Maddie see wow I, there's so many Maddies I'm just like my head is spinning but I don't I don't know that's just the vibes that I get so it was just like I felt like it was a really funny moment on the podium like definitely not intentional because they're just holding a bunch of shit with the flowers and all that um but it was just funny where Maddie and Gabby were holding hands and then Guillaume's like oh fuck I should make sure that like chalk and base get there yeah <laughs> and he Guillaume being like the awesome person that he is just like grabs Maddie's hand. I was like, they're so cute, you know? Like, yeah. They're so cute. Definitely. I agree. I think we could see that uh, friendship between Madison Hubble and Gabby in the, I think it was called the Inside Edge, whatever the Olympics series on the I Am top teams. And then also, I guess, just from Instagram, <laughs> their posts together. But I think that the ice dance was the perfect event to end out world's 
for the season and end out this amazing, crazy, uh, sad at times, stressful at times, drama-filled at times, Olympic season with a sort of positive energy in the ice dance. So I was happy with how it all ended up. All right. So that is a wrap for today's episode on the 2022 World Championships. Be sure to check out our next episode on Junior Worlds, which is happening April 13th to 17th. As a reminder, please follow us on Instagram and Twitter at InTheElementFS to stay up to date with figure skating news and send us questions that you want us to talk about on our show. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Leave us a comment down below on your opinions and thoughts because if you're a figure skating fan, you are definitely opinionated. Be sure to subscribe. We are available on YouTube if you want to just come see some snazzy visuals and Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you want to just listen to our crackly voices. Thank you again. Until next time, stay edgy.